In this video, I want to experiment with the Seat Monkey, this, the uh, Mozilla Sea Monkey project suite, which includes an HTML editor, and see how it works for making a web page. So I'm over here at uh, seamonkey-project.org/releases, and I've got the option here to download. So I'm going to go ahead and download. I'm on a Windows machine at the moment, so I'm going to go and download the Windows installer, and I will save this. And here is the Sea Monkey suite, and the Sea Monkey browser is currently available. And let's check some things out. So Bing.com, of course, is going to be Microsoft's new answer to Google. And now I've got a new browser called Bing, uh, called Sea Monkey. Down in the lower left corner of the status bar, I've got links for some different tools in the suite. And I can see this middle option here is Composer. So I'm going to go ahead and click Composer to start up their web development tool, and here we go. So this is my Composer page, which is a uh, it's a pretty you know basic WYSIWYG editor. WYSIWYG meaning what you see is what you get, and uh, Composer is the old uh, Netscape Navigator web development name that was uh, yeah, relatively popular back in '98, '99, 2000. I'm going to go ahead and click on File, Save As, and I'm going to give a title for this page, and I'll call this uh, Ralph's Practice Page. And I'll just, for now, I'll go ahead and save this to my desktop. And for web pages, it's always best to use all lowercase letters and no spaces for the file name. And so I'm just going to go and call this Ralph Practice Page. And I'm using hyphens or dashes instead of um, spaces. So no spaces, all lowercase letters, good, safe way to go. And I'll save that. And let me just experiment with uh, making some. Uh, make it a basic web page. I've got body text set. If I click on this, I can see that there's some basic headings. There are six different levels of headlines, heading one through heading six, heading one being the biggest and the boldest. I'm going to choose heading one. I can type in Ralph's practice page with composer. There we go, and it automatically defaults back to body text, which is basically going to be a paragraph. However, I want to ensure it. I'm going to go to the paragraph option and say, this is my first paragraph using Composer. There we go. And I see I've got some choices down here at the bottom, one of them being HTML source. So let's kind of just take a look and see what Composer is doing for us. I'm going to jump over to HTML source, and I can see that it's, uh, it's using a a slightly very older but very common version of the markup language, hypertext markup language 4.01 transitional as opposed to XHTML strict or something like that. There's a head section which contains a basic meta tag and of course the title of my page. Don't confuse the title of the page with the headline. The body section is what of course people see on their browser. Um, the body section is what people are really looking at. And there is my headline one. That's my big bold headline, Rouse Practice Page with Composer. And this is the paragraph that I just typed. There's an opening paragraph tag and a closing paragraph tag. There's also a break tag right in there, probably because I hit the Enter key. And that's it. So I'm going to jump back over to normal view, and that's how it's looking. And there's a preview mode, I see, and that'll kind of show me how it's going to look in the browser. But the kind of nice thing about any WYSIWYG editor is there shouldn't be a big difference between preview in the browser versus how it looks in your normal design mode. Uh, there's a, another tab down here, display icons for all HTML tags. So if I click this, I get a little reference, which is very helpful. This lets me know that I'm working in the body section. There's a headline one tag. There's a paragraph. Let's try a couple other things. I just click down here to this other spot. I'm in body text, and I'm going to create a bulleted list, and there we go. A bulleted list is made up of an unordered list tag with a series of list items, and this will be uh, item 1, item 2, item 3. So I have three list items within my unordered list. If I look at my HTML source, there it is, unordered list with three list items, and it looks like I, yep, that last one I has a break tag in it. So let me jump back over to normal view. There we go. So I can keep trucking along. Just press my enter key twice and I'm back to body text. Let me try to get a picture in there. Now I don't think I have a picture on my desktop that I can use. So let me jump out and find a quick picture off the web. Okay, I just went out to the web and I found a picture of me and I stuck that, uh, saved that to my desktop. So I'm going to click their image button. Image location. I'll choose file. I'll go to my desktop. There it is. And I've got some options here. Alternate text is always good for an image, and this is a uh, Ralph at the 
Bigfoot 10K. Click OK. Uh oh, and it looks like I've got trouble in paradise. So it looks like my image is broken, which is kind of unusual. I can see here on my desktop, there's my rphillips.jpg picture. Let me double click it. Yep, it opens fine. And let me jump over to their HTML source, and I see that there's an image tag with a style attribute to set its width and height. That's perfectly normal looking. There's alternate text and quotes. That's normal looking. SRC, rphillips.jpg, and that's also normal, normal looking. So let me just do a file save and see what else might be going on here. Ah, well, I just opened up the page locally in the Sea uh, Monkey browser, and of course the web page is coming up okay, even though my image isn't showing in the previewer. So I won't let that concern me too much. But I can put in my bulleted lists, I can put in paragraphs, I've got a certainly a image in there now. Let's see if I can't assign a hyperlink to this particular image. Click the image once to select it. Click on the link button and enter a web page. I'll put in http colon slash slash www dot um, let's try runnersworld.com as a web source, as a web, web address. I'll click OK. Here's my Sea uh, Monkey page and I'm just going to move this off to the side and go to the browser and reload. Well, let me make sure that I have saved it. Let me hit save first. Browser reload. And notice I can now put my mouse over this picture on the page. I can click on it and it takes me to runnersworld.com. So that looks like that that's working. And let's do one more thing. Let's make sure we know how to make a link out of some text. So I will select the word composer, choose link, enter a web page location, And I'll simply just paste in the web address to where Sea Monkey Project where I downloaded that, and I'll click OK. I'm going to save this. See how it looks there? I've got the little underline. Let me go back to my browser version and reload. And yep, that's looking good too. So that's making a basic web page with Sea um, Monkey and the Composer Editor, which is built inside of that suite of applications. So simply install it, check it out, and you can start making web pages pretty quickly. You'll have HTML files and image files. Now right now, the pages that I'm looking at, or the page that I'm looking at, is saved to my local computer. So I'm really the only one who can see it. And if you wanted the world to see it, then you would simply take your HTML files and your um, CSS files, if you had any, I didn't make any this time, and your image files, and you would upload them to a host, a web host, which is a server on the web.